clarinet fist. Live. It happens, you know. So the plan was we were gonna go see the artistic committee concert right now, but <clears throat> the shuttle is taking forever to get to the hotel. So now um, we're late. But it's chilling. We're gonna. We really want to see Squonk, but I think um, they're playing again anyway. So we're gonna have a chance to see them and talk to them anyway. So it's not that bad. It's literally the first day of the conference. Uh, we ball. So reaction to missing Squonk. Because of our shuttle. Yeah. So got my clothes now. Because I didn't forget them. But now we're waiting for an Uber. Isn't that right, Kevin? Yes, sir. Day two of IC. 
ACA, let's go. And Leo in the background. Remind me never again to work with a washed up alcoholic. experience of the ICA 2022 so far I can only sum it up in a couple words Jeff Anderley asked us for a picture that's it it's pretty surreal Seven. <laughs> oh speaking of ICA didn't even mention we were just hanging out with Jonathan Russell what honestly I still can't fathom that I'm here and that we've seen everybody Jeff, John, Stefan, Michael Lonestern that we're gonna see later too in his performance. I'm I just can't. This. That's, that's I just can't. Oh, it doesn't zoom. I forget it doesn't zoom. We're at McDonald's now. This festival is unreal. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. When you're about to watch Michael Lowenstern. Yes, sir. The moon. Wait, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Whoa. Right there. All in here. <laughs> We're inside the moon, guys. We did it.
much the end of uh, day three of low ICA. I am tired. I'm going back to my room because I actually am kind of tired. Um, the guys went uh, to eat with uh, a fellow person they met at um, the convention. So, yeah. I chose not to. I was I'm really tired. I'm really happy and excited that I'm really happy and just there's no words I'm of like what I feel right now. But if I could name one, it is exhausted. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. I think we're traveling back home tomorrow. Um, that'll be fun, I guess. It's just so surreal, you know? <sighs> so we'll see you tomorrow. Yo, final day. In Arizona. Let's go, boys. Final day in Arizona. Hey, so really quick, everyone's uh, take on low ICA, Kevin? Pretty great. Danny? Pretty good. Leo's like pretty mid. No? I have a paragraph, but in summary, it is exactly what I needed. Quite surreal in general. Is it fun? Hey, Kevin, you know what you realize? You know, I Quite literally, low ICA was the move. Just to give everybody context, we got a member beating in the room. Coming? Jeff Anderley Pizza. He can slap tongue now. We're going to be heading out Show soon. Like, Last day in Arizona. Sure. Low ICA 2023. Getting stopped for a water bottle was fun. Yes, sir. There's gear. Well, okay. 2023, the first ever international low clarinet fest. Sponsored by ICA, if you're like asking me. 
mentioned it. I thought rather than writing a big statement or something um, about how I really feel about it, uh, you know, I'm not really the best with my words, so I feel like it would be best if I just talk it out because that's really the best way I can really express this all. I don't think I can begin to describe what that entire experience meant to me um, without repeating myself a lot and saying that it was just surreal, um, a dream come true, and just what I needed. <laughs> I think Leo said that earlier on. Just getting to meet so many people that were so passionate about the low clarinet community, bass clarinet, contra alto. It was just an amazing experience to be around. Not to say, I guess it's also to say that in my life as a bass clarinetist, um, you know, there is the the um, stigma of last chair gets bass clarinet. So, you know, um, always feeling way underappreciated a lot of the time, you know, and it's just there at that event, it felt like I belong you know it felt like it's just in my element I, I felt home um, and I think as the countless people were saying the entire thing just felt like one whole big family gathering you know um, it felt since this was the first one it was it was a small very intimate event and it felt super personal um, and again I think it, the reason it felt like that is because everybody there um, since we are supporting Lair low clarinets, um, it's almost like everyone was just combined in a effort to bring up this instruments instruments that have been so underappreciated. Um, and it was just it was just a beautiful thing. There was so much a wealth of knowledge that I learned um, uh, in general, just so much uh, the master classes we attended provided so much insight into new ways to look at my playing. Um, a lot of the presentations did that. There was a composing master class that really got me to think about it differently instead of just thinking of it being too intimidating. Oh my god, the the performing artists were amazing. Like, it's, and I hate to say this, and again, you can tear me up if you want. But it's almost like as a bass clarinetist too, not that it is an underappreciated instrument, but I feel like coming from where I came in South Texas, there was a part of me <laughs> waiting to hear somebody mess up. And again, like no one's perfect. You're going to mess up, right? But like almost that, like, you know, I feel like there's not enough good bass clarinetists here in South Texas that I know of, or like people that really push it, that sound like, you know, they play the instrument that it was it took me so back over there because so many people played so amazing and it's just there wasn't one person that was just eh you know everybody was so freaking good dude again such a refreshing environment to be around it's just i can i can't i can't i can't <laughs> i still can't fathom that's happening even though i've had a full week to process got to meet I got to take a picture with Stephen Vermeer, so I hope I <laughs> have time to talk to him way more in the future. Uh, Sarah Watch too. I got a masterclass by Sarah Watches, which is what you see um, in the video. Um, in the video? Maybe not. Maybe I'll put that there. Remind me. But I got a masterclass by the Sarah Watch, which was um, amazing. There was a moment in that masterclass where her, on a Selmer privilege, while I'm on a Tosca, said, match me and my heart. <laughs> <laughs> the part of me was just like okay <laughs> and we both played a, a low e together you know and i just like all i felt was her sound just <laughs> the sarah watch master class amazing um after that we had her performance quantum spawn and los padres de clarinete bajo Bajos? Bajo? I'm sorry, my Spanish is like not okay. <laughs> you know, realistically, our international debut, which is, or our debut with the low clarinet community, which is, <sighs> that's another thing I have to say. Just the, to finally feel like we were in an environment that was accepting of what we were doing. Not to say that where we come from is a dejecting environment, but it feels like not a lot of people get it, you know, and it's 
it's that struggle, but just being there, we felt so appreciated, you know, it just, it makes me want to cry thinking about it, you know, move the camera, sorry, that feeling is just, it's some, it's, it's an amazing feeling, you know, all the people we got to meet, like I said, I know I was talking about it, we got to meet and converse with some people, I got, I got, I got, I got to tell Michael Lowenton that realistically he was my first teacher for bass clarinet because when I first started playing bass clarinet in high school, um, he was the videos I found. One thing I can say for meeting Michael Lowenstern is I am 100% happy he was exactly the guy he was in his videos. He did not, does not change for anybody and I could not appreciate that enough for being a role model out there, you know. There was also this insane moment during the entire thing where we were doing an extended techniques uh, class, master class if you want to call it, and again, it's in that video. Just <laughs> everybody, all, all these goats are just in one place. Um, it's, it's very, it was very insane, surreal type thing, you know. Um, earlier on in the year, um, John and Russell came to Texas A&M University, Kingsville, and you know, spent a full day with us. It was our read day, I believe, realistically, something like that. Um, but over here at International Low Clarinet Festival, we got to meet Jeff Andrew along with him and, uh, you know, just finally getting to meet Squonk as the pair is, um, was amazing. We had to talk with him a bit and just, you know, share some stories. Um, got to ask them about some pieces that are, I got, I, I literally asked them both about them too and both of them had the exact same reaction. Which was collectively, uh. <laughs> Speaking of Squonk, we finally got to hear them live. Sadly, our, the first day we missed um, their first four performances because um, we, we stuff came up. Uh, as you could tell, maybe I forgot something, and quote unquote, I don't confirm. Um, but we weren't able to catch their first day, but we were able to see them with Improbable Beast the last day we were there play Double Contrato. And oh my god. God, dude. It's just something else hearing that and experiencing that and being in that moment. You know, these guys that I look up for to so much and people that I hear on the internet all the time, to finally hear that live, it, it, it made me so emotional. It brought me to tears, really. Um, after that performance, I was telling um, Squonk himself that, like, you know, being in that moment, just really getting to realize and appreciate the full set of events that were going on you know that is, is beautiful you know also just another topic and again this isn't to stroke my own ego whatsoever but um i guess i'll start this out by saying i am a guy who very much was so insecure about his playing i am still to this day but that's only because i really want to continue to push myself to be the best that i can be but to hear from many people that you know, we got people talking and a lot of people that uh, came up to us, told us so many good things, telling us that like some of the stuff we're doing is like not what anybody else was doing when they were undergrads in college or some crap that that shit meant so much to me as, as a guy who never wants to pat himself on the back and wants to be negative about his playing. It just, it's, it warmed my heart to know that, you know, and again, it's also the combativeness to that. It's to tell yourself, like, bro, you've been putting in the fucking work. Pardon my language. You've been putting in the work. You deserve this. <laughs> and to have, again, a lot of my idols say so many good things about me. Again, it blows my mind that all these people just know we exist now. It's kind of insane that Squonk knows about Quantum Spawn, the baby that was us that never thought anything of it, you know? One specific moment that really shined for me in this entire festival, and it wasn't a master class or performance or anything like that. I think it was after we got home, actually, or something. Um... You know, we were making our posts. I think Leo made this post. He made a post about, you know, the low clarinet, all that. But Jonathan Russell posted on that comment, on that post. Um, I can't tell you the exact words, but he said something along the lines of, you know, with in regards to us. 
um, that for them, it means so much seeing these like young, talented people that are eager to do this stuff. That the inspiration goes both ways. That they see us and it reminds them of what it's all for. And, you know, that was one of the most important comments of my current career. You know, that means so much because I really hope all these people up there know how appreciative we are of what they've laid before us. Um, because we 100% would not be doing this if it weren't for them. None of us would be, realistically, in a lot of ways. So many people would not be even close to this. I could go on and on about what this festival meant to me, but I think the point is driven home, especially with all the posts you see around everywhere. Um... This meant the world to me. And in terms of my long-term career, it meant everything to me. And this is just the first Los ICA, you know? Um, there's going to be more. Second one is 2025. This is going to be biannual again. Kind of sad, but we're getting it, you know? <laughs> one thing I want to take more appreciation for... Um, is just the openness of this entire festival. Um, you know, again, like I said, feeling just accepted and appreciated with what we were doing and putting out there. Um, anybody we talked to, everything felt so open and it didn't feel like there was any freaking ego there, which was even better, you know. Everyone just felt like they were there appreciating what has been built in the low clarinet community and appreciating what the future has in store, you know. Um, and the one thing that, again, Jonathan Russell made a post about this, um, that is very true, and I love that it is true. Um, but something that even I didn't notice, which is kind of a good thing, but maybe a slight negative thing, because, you know, I wasn't even thinking about it, but the whole gender balance of that place felt very 50-50. Male, female representation it both felt so equal and the reason i say i didn't even notice it because it's just it felt normal it just you know there was a point in my younger clarinet playing years where i would sit there and play and see all these grades and be like yeah that's cool but i think even i remember saying it to one of my friends at the time like i really wish there was more female badass female based clarinetists out there um, of course, that is maybe to my ignorance and slight misogynism at the time because it's not like I was looking for them. Um, but I definitely feel now there is just so much more of those out there. And I'm glad that more and more that talent isn't being shoved under the rug because there is so many amazing female bass clarinets out there that sadly have been shoved under the rug because of this culture um and it sucks but i'm glad low clarinet fest was sort of the beacon for change for that maybe not beacon for change right like i don't want to call it that because this should just be the norm now that's something that made me really happy to sit that back and think about afterwards just the inclusiveness of the event was amazing like i said i could go on and on about why this festival was amazing to me and why it was just amazing in general. But, um, like I said, I think I could, I could go on and on, but I'm not going to waste about an hour of your time today. I want to start off by thanking the entire artistic committee and everybody who worked on this event and made it possible. You guys are badasses. Um, a particular thank you to the badass Dr. Stephanie Gardner. If you guys know anything about the event, it has been said literally everywhere. She is the one who is, um, I don't know any metaphors, the sledgehammer on the iron, worst one ever. She pretty much strongholded the entire thing. And I really hope that never goes unnoticed. Stephanie Gardner, 
thank you for helping making this all a reality. As I've said before, this meant everything. Thank you. I would also like to extend a thank you to my school, Texas A&M University, Kingsville School of Music, and our Department of Arts and Sciences, all that good stuff that realistically made it possible for us to travel with your financial assistance and whatnot. Um, this life-changing experience for me wouldn't have happened without your guys' support, and uh, I, can, I can, I don't think I'll ever be able to repay back. Finally, the biggest thank you probably goes to, at this current moment, my clarinet professor, Dr. Andrea Foss Rockport, who I will call Dr. VR from now on because I'm not going to pronounce that every time. Dr. VR, thank you honestly for your guidance and thank you for your guidance up to this point so far. Honestly, and the quartet has talked about this so much, we appreciate you beyond probably our lifetime because without you realistically all these connections we've been able to make and what we've been able to achieve wouldn't have been possible yes we did make it to low clarinet ourselves but realistically you're the one who saw something in us and thought we were good enough to do that um willing to back us and fully support us thank you for being you know open about us wanting to pursue bass clarinet seriously um, you know, there was never a point where she made us 100% put down the bass clarinet. Yes, she wants us to play clarinet, but that's important. But she never stilted our growth on that instrument. Because in a way, I guess you could see that was the way we were going to grow the most musically. And talk to VR, like I said, we can never thank you enough for everything you've done for us. You are an amazing human being. And my gratitude will forever be to you. Thank you, Dr. VR. I was about to end this, but first off, let me thank my quartet, Los Padres de Clarineto Bajos. You guys are amazing, and you guys inspire me to, to push myself every day. Honestly, every time we rehearse, that is one of the only groups I am 100% of the time I'm there. It doesn't feel like a chore at all. It, feels like a family being with y'all to be honest and this week getting to spend this experience with y'all was one of the best ever you guys are my family okay no i always got you guys you guys you guys i love you guys simply um you guys make the dream of bass clarinet quartet a reality in terms of my entire life so you guys are always in my heart and finally, to that term, to my dual partner, Leonardo Palma. Dude, we've been through it. We've been through the highs, the lows, the absolute worst of worst. And now I think we can call this a high of highs. Dude, quantum spawn for life. You were the guy in high school who really pushed me and wanted got me to want to actually play bass clarinet so without you realistically I wouldn't be here um we're not just dual partners we're brothers man but you I can't believe we've achieved this much together we're going to achieve a lot more and we're going to do much more count on that Leo, like I said, I could never praise you enough. You constantly push me to be a better bass clarinetist and a better human being. You... I appreciate you so much. Really. Like I said before, quantum spawn for life. Let's do this shit. This entire experience has really confirmed for me, and I said this in one of my earlier posts, but really, I am so confident in what I'm doing now in terms of my music career. I know this is what I want to do, to continue to innovate on the bass clarinet and continue playing bass clarinet. When I first started, it's almost like I didn't know what I was going to do, you know. 
like on clarinet I felt kind of like eh you know I didn't know what there was but as soon as I put my hands on a bass clarinet the actual possibility of a music career came through it was the only instrument that I played that made me feel the way I do on it and this entire experience just made me confirm this is what I want to do I am a bass clarinetist and this is just what I want to do I love music and I love what I do this is not ending anytime soon in fact like I keep saying it is always just the beginning because there is always something more Thank you to everyone that made this experience such an unforgettable experience. I don't have enough words to really express how grateful I am. So I guess with that, um, like I said, there's so much more I could say. Um, but I think a bulk of it was in here. Um, I hope everybody has a blessed day or night or wherever they are in their time period in the world that sees this. Um... I hope everyone has long and prosperous years. I hope everybody's 2023 is as amazing as it can be. Lord, for sure, this was the best way I could have ever started mine. Um, I just wish for everyone to be happy and blessed and to really find what they want in life because that's all that matters. Thank you all. Um, I'll be seeing you. You'll be seeing us 100%. Be on the lookout for what Los Padres comes up with next. Be on the lookout definitely for what Quantum Spawn has coming up. Hope you all have a good one. <sighs> See, I don't even know how to end this because I feel so happy right now. <laughs> Too many more adventures to come. This is only the beginning. Also, to those of you who are in the San Antonio area, um, within the next month or so, around this time, February 10th, 3.30 p.m., Los Padres de Clarina Tobajo and Quantum Spawn return to bring you the same program that we played at, low, at ICA Low Clarinet Fest, which is Clez Duo by Jonathan Russell for, you know, Quantum Spawn. Quantum Spawn will bring you Clez Duo. You get it. Then we're going to bring on Los Padres de Clarinetto Bajos to bring you uh, Camille Saint. Camille Saint Sons. That one. Dance Moncabre uh, for four bass clarinets for bass clarinet quartet arranged by the amazing Cornelius Boots. And then we're going to finish it off with a piece for bass clarinet for one E flat and three bass clarinet. Maybe a contra alto. Be on the lookout. Uh, we're going to be playing Wolf by Luke Ellard, which is a piece for that, you know, a bass ensemble, realistically, and electronics. So be on the lookout for that. Come check us out. Say hi. We're going to be there for practically the whole experience, and you can come talk to us about anything. Blah, 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 blah. Hope to see you there. All right. I think that does it. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Probably didn't say everything I actually wanted, but, you know, we ball. To the next I shade, little clarinet fest and whatever comes after. Hope you all have a good one. <laughs>